Hey everyone, I'm putting on my Dr. Christy Winters hat today and I'm going to be giving a video on how to academic. This video is pretty much um, an insertion into the dialogue that's happening between Essence of Thought and Hamza Tsertsi. Mr. Tsertsi in his discussion of Islam uses a single published piece by an academic and he's using it incorrectly. And so to demonstrate this, and to differentiate it between a research article and the standards of academia, I'm making this video to explain how the do's and don'ts of how to academic. I'm not doing this from some kind of claim of authority, I'm doing this from experience. I myself have a PhD, I've published using both quantitative and qualitative methods on political behavior, I've in peer-reviewed journals, I've been a reviewer on other people's journals, so I know this process quite well. To help explain why Mr. Tsertsis is not using the article by Dr. Petrovich correctly, I'm going to compare this with another recent study. This is going to come from the Journal of Cognitive Science. It's entitled Judgments about Facts and Fiction by Children from Religious and Non-Religious Backgrounds. We're going to compare what a research article looks like compared to a review article, what the difference is, why it's important, and how each should be used. First, when I listen to Mr. Surtsey speak, he seems to be slightly confused in the terminology we use in academia. So academics don't publish journals, publishing house published journals, and a, an academic journal is a collection of peer-reviewed articles. Now sometimes academics will refer to their paper, and that might be a working paper that they're going to give at a conference. Sometimes they'll say, I've published a paper in a journal. So the, the terms article and paper are maybe a little bit more fast and loose, but journals are definitely collections of articles that have been published, having gone through the peer review process. When you cite someone's article, you should give the name, I mean, if you want to be clear, then you should cite the article name and the journal in which it was published, for instance. I could talk about judgments about fact and fiction by children from religious and non-religious backgrounds by Corvo et al. published in the journal Cognitive Science. That's very clear. It gives the title of the article, it gives the authors, and it gives the name of the journal. It don't mean a thing if it ain't peer-reviewed. <sighs> there are two categories of evidence that you can cite in support of your own test your own paper, your own work, your own research. There are peer-reviewed articles and peer-reviewed books. That's basically it. If it's not peer-reviewed, it really doesn't matter. Allow me to give a personal example. I have a chapter in this book, Sex, Lies, and the Ballot Box. It's right here. It's chapter 48, but chapter is a very generous way of describing it. It's basically the length of a blog. This is kind of your the book you give at Christmas to the person who's a political nut of to leave in their bathroom. That's the kind of book this is. But I have done some original research in here for this. I collected some information, made some analyses, even put in, I think, ooh, a table. Look, it's got a table. And further reading. I would never, ever cite this as a credible source for my own research. And I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't accept an article that cited any of the chapters in here because this has not been peer-reviewed. This is just a collection of stuff that was published by Biteback, I think is the publisher. It's not even an academic publishing house. This is entertainment. It's not scholarship. And I wrote it! So I'm saying that about my own stuff. Even within a peer-reviewed journal, there are differences between the kinds of information, the level of weight that we give it. I found a really nice table that goes over different types of academic articles. And as you can see, there's the first type, the research or empirical article, is an article reporting on the results of one or more studies or experiments. It's written by the person who conducted the research and it is considered a primary source. If you have published your original research and undergone peer review and you've got it out in the world, that is a study. That is evidence of something. Compare this with the purpose of a review article. Review articles summarize the finding of other studies or experiments 
attempts to identify trends or broader, draw broader conclusions, scholarly in nature, but not a primary source or research article. However, its references to other articles will include primary sources or research articles. Another category that might be relevant to this are other things that go into a journal. These are professional communications, book reviews, letters to the editor, and so on. Most scholarly journals publish articles that pertain to the workings of the profession, but are not scholarly in nature. In the case of what Mr. Tsertsis is offering, he's offering a review. And unlike in philosophy or in theology, one person's opinion is not enough when it comes to the sciences, because science isn't about citing authorities, it's about triangulating results. What would we find in a piece, in a research article or an empirical piece of research? We would find that it reviews the relevant theories, it operationalizes concepts in a way that could be tested, it adheres to the scientific method and presents null and alternative hypotheses, it uses statistical methods to determine the statistical significance of the effects that it observes, and it's published in a peer-reviewed journal. As I said, science triangulates its results, and that is why unless you are the first person to have ever done this, uh, an experiment, you are going to list a lot of other people's work before you move on with your own. And what Mr. Tsertsi seems to be doing is taking one academic and one article that's a review article and trying to read into it his worldview. This sets off a lot of alarm bells. If you want to demonstrate that something exists in the real world, citing one person's review article isn't enough. As I said, we triangulate our results in the social sciences, and that is because we need to kind of cluster a series of different experiments in order to get at what we think is going on in the real world. A single study is just a data point. It's not definitive. It's not the first or the last. It's just one in a series. And so the, I think a good way to internalize this is take the advice that I was given as a PhD student. Nobody cares what you think, only what you can demonstrate. And if you can't demonstrate the claims that you make about empirical reality, for instance, if you can't demonstrate through a series of studies that atheist, atheism is a forced psychology, and you would have to, of course, define what forced is, and you would have to define what an unforced psychology is, and then you would have to be able to measure how people perceive this or how they're exposed to it or different um, how it's forced upon them, at what age can you be an atheist before you're seven and the age of reason? Are we talking about adults? Are we looking at people who've grown up outside of religious houses or inside religious houses? You can see that all of this, um, all of these questions demonstrate the real weakness in his assertions and that's because he's using the scholarship incorrectly. Here's an example of how a scholar would cite references to other works that are triangulated to the work that they're doing. I also want to pick up on a misrepresentation of what Dr. Petrovich says in her article about the universality of religious beliefs, and I also want to bring up information that comes after this article that demonstrates the assertions about belief uh, religious beliefs being universal are actually wrong because there is a demonstrable counterfactual that once you have the counterfactual, you can't say things are universal anymore. So let's start off with what Dr. Petrovich said about the universality of religious beliefs. She writes, To establish whether members of the human population universally hold any particular religious beliefs, we also need methods of research that are used in cognitive and developmental psychology when dealing with large numbers of participants. The possibility that some religious beliefs are universal, that is to say, basic beliefs in a non-anthropomorphic god as creator of the natural world, seems to have a stronger empirical foundation than could be inferred from the religious texts. If you listen to what this section is saying, she's not saying that religious beliefs are universal. She's saying to establish whether or not they are, then we're going to need to go into cognitive and development cognitive and developmental psychology and appropriate those methods of investigation, experimentation, research in order to test this idea. That article was written in 2000, or published in 2007, which means it was probably written in 2005, 2006, which is getting on 10 years ago. And since the 2007 publication of this article, there's been more research done. 
According to Dr. Everett, the Prahana people have no concept of a supreme spirit being or God. And be, that is because of the, the way that they set up their culture. If you have not seen it directly or your most immediate, like your father saw it, maybe your grandfather, then it doesn't exist. Because if you don't have trustworthy eyewitness testimony that is within your lifetime, that doesn't count as evidence. And so these people have no idea of a God. Now the question becomes, are there other elements of religious belief? They have you know, spirits and, and other supernatural things. But again, claiming that there's a universality of religion based on this review article is misrepresenting what she's saying. And it doesn't, it's not being kept up with the research out there in the counterfactuals that religious belief in terms of an anthropomorphic god or a non-anthropomorphic god are universal. They're not. Let's wrap this up. What are the main points that I've covered in this video? Scholars publish articles in journals. If it isn't peer-reviewed, no one will take it or you seriously. Getting published in a peer-reviewed journal is not enough. Only research articles, and those would be either empirical or theoretical, count toward our building of knowledge. Review articles do not present replicable evidence for causal mechanisms at work. Therefore, they are not primary sources of information for research findings. Citing one article alone is insufficient because science aggregates results. We triangulate them over, men, over time and over studies. And it's important to keep up with the latest findings or someone who has will call you out on it. I hope that you found this video informative. And if not, at least I hope you found it entertaining. I did try to sing once or twice. And if you have any questions or comments or other things that you want to say, please feel free to put them in the description box below. Otherwise, until next time, I've been Christy, you've been awesome, and I'll see you guys later. And go Essence of Thought, you're winning! <laughs> Bye.